Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, in this short video, we're going to be going over the three vowels in the Arabic language. So in any language, we have speech sounds. Speech sounds are the different sounds that you're going to find in a language, and those sounds can be broken down into two different categories. There are consonants and there are vowels. Consonants are speech sounds where the different parts of your mouth are touching each other in order to create them, like the sound ab and s and ez and os. On the other hand, we have vowels. Vowels are speech sounds where the different parts of your mouth are not touching each other in order to create them, but rather your mouth is just holding a shape. So for example, a, e, and u. In these three vowels, the different parts of my mouth are not touching each other and thus their vowels. So there are three types of vowels in the Arabic language, the a, the e, and the u. And we're going to be exploring them in this video. So vowels can be broken down into two different categories. We have long vowels and short vowels. Short vowels produce a short vowel sound, like ba, while long vowels produce a long vowel sound, like ba. Now in the Arabic language, short vowels are represented by accents, are represented by marks. So we have the fetha, which is this little bar that you can see on top here. That is what's, rep what, that is what's representing the vowel a. Ah. So unlike in English, where it's an actual letter, in English, the A represents the vowel A. Ah. In Arabic, that's not the case. Vowels are represented by marks, usually, except for long vowels, as we're going to see. While on the other hand, consonants are represented by actual letters. Now, that being said, long vowels are represented by a letter, and we're going to see. So this is what we're going to be explaining, inshallah, in this video, short vowels and long vowels. So short vowels, as I said in Arabic language, are represented by marks called harakat. So these marks are called harakat, and they're pretty much these type of accents. So this little W thing that you see here, this little wow thing you see here, sorry. And then this little mark that you see here, and then this little mark that you see here. All these three here are called harakat. There are these types of accents. So there are three types of harakat to represent the three possible short vowels in the Arabic language. There are three types of harakat to represent the three possible short vowels in the Arabic language. There's a dhamma, which is a small wow, which is placed above the letter to represent the sound u. So anytime you see a letter with this small little wow on top, which is called a dhamma, this type of haraka is going to represent the short vowel u. So we're going to say bu. While the kesara is a line that's placed below the letter to, rep to represent the sound e. So as you can see here, this little mark here is called a kesara. It's one of the three types of harakat, and it's representing the vowel e. So here you would say b. And then you have the fetha, which is a line placed above the letter to represent the sound a, like you can see here, ba. So this is how short vowels are represented in the Arabic language. We have the dhamma, which is a small wow that's placed above the letter to represent the sound u. We have the kesara, which is a short line placed below the letter to represent the sound e. And then we have the fetha, which is a line placed above the letter to represent the vowel a. Now, moving on to long vowels. Long vowels in Arabic language are represented by three letters. Long vowels in Arabic language are represented by three letters. And we covered that the difference between a short vowel and a long vowel is that a short vowel produces a short vowel sound, ba, bi, bu, while a long vowel as we're going to see, represents a long vowel sound. Bu, bi, ba. So the wow following a letter carrying a dhamma is one of the long vowels. And obviously this long vowel is for the sound u. So any anytime you see a wow following a letter that's carrying a dhamma, the letter before it has a dhamma on it, then this is going to create a long u vowel sound. Bu. If you see a, a ya following a letter carrying a kesara, then this is going to create the long e sound. B. And then if you see an alif following a letter carrying a fetha, then it's going to create a long a vowel. Ba. And these are how vowels function in the Arabic language. 
So short vowels are represented by harakat, accents, and we have the dhamma, the kasara, and the fatha, and each of them represents their respective vowel, either a or u or e. And then long vowels are represented by three letters in the Arabic language, the waw, the ya, and the alif. But this is only the case when they're following a letter carrying their respective short vowel. So for the waw, it's a dhamma, bu, on the letter before it. And for the ya, it's a kasara on the letter before it, bi. And then for the alif, it's that the letter before it is carrying a fatha, like you can see here. Ba, and then this creates a long vowel. So these are vowels in the Arabic language and how they function.